Hi folks, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's about time I started this video for today. I've been playing around for more than half an hour trying to set up all these bits and pieces here to give you a bit of a story, something to ponder today. And um, you can't smell it here, but it's getting close to spring in, in Adelaide. And I've got a beautiful jasmine bush just up there above. It's just out of the picture, I think. And I've got this beautiful perfume of jasmine, jasmine flowers coming down. You might hear the chimes go off in the background. Uh, that's not saying it's lunchtime, but that'll just add to the ambience. So welcome back. So you might look at all this here and say, what on earth is he on about today? <coughs> it's a little bit of a history lesson in some ways, and just something to whet your appetite and have a think about. Um, I'm going to show you a photograph here. I'm going to get up from here and then I've got to try and get back here. I'll be going up and forth a few times, so hopefully I won't fall over having uh, had my hip surgery not all that long ago. So, um, the first thing I'm going to show you is a photograph that was taken some years ago and then I'll get on to why I'm talking about all this stuff. Okay, I just printed this off a little while ago on my uh, printer at home. Don't know whether you can focus on that or whether it's focusing on that, but that's a couple of guys standing alongside of a tree in, the, in South Australia's Riverland. If I come back, you might better read what it says on the bottom there. And they're actually firing an old folding Kodak vest type camera by pulling on a piece of string to take a self uh, photograph, photographing themselves, a selfie in other words. This is the earliest forms of selfie that we used to have. I'll just read what it says here. Self taken photo with string. Ron Quick and Noel, 1937. So that was in 1937. And that's what they used to do. Of course when people started taking photos they say, well I want to be in the photo but I can't be in it if I'm taking photos of someone else. A little bit windy here isn't it you can hear the chimes going <laughs> we'll sit down hopefully uh, it won't blow the camera over or blow the phone over settle down wind stop <coughs> so today is a little bit of a, a lesson on uh, the various remote controls and I don't cover everything here it's a good exercise to do a search on uh, the internet on Google to look up the history of remote control of all sorts of devices but there are a number of cameras here. If you have a look at them, uh, I'll just tell you which ones they are. This one here is the Pentax MZS film camera. This one down here is the Pentax. Okay, well I guess that was pretty predictable, wasn't it? I predicted that. And now the chimes are going, so it is probably afternoon tea time, but I've already had a break trying to change location now and set this up again so uh, I didn't actually review all of what I took before but we'll use some of that and it's quite a good um, catastrophe that happened halfway through anyway so I did show you this photograph I hope you could see that photograph before reasonably clearly which was a um, an early uh, back in 1937 uh, my uh, father-in-law's brother and a friend taking their a selfie using a piece of string on an old folding Kodak um, uh, pocket camera, they used to call them. I've got one here somewhere, couldn't find it. I had some other props to use here, but I can't ever find half of the stuff that I've got here. I know I've got it, but <laughs> there's a few things that I had. I had something here before and then I lost it, so I'm not gonna show you that, And uh, but that's by the way. We'll, we'll give you something to think about today anyway. So, I think I started to say what cameras I had here. This is a Pentax MZS film camera. This is a Pentax KR, I think it is, or KX, digital SLR camera. Um, this one down here is a Pentax SFXN film camera. And uh, this one here is a Pentax IST digital uh, camera, the first Pentax digital SLR that came out. This one here is the um, Pentax MZ, MZ6, another one in the MZ film series. 
um, similar to the NZS. And uh, this one here is a Pentax Spotmatic 2. And this one up here is a Pentax, it's a point and shoot, IQ Zoom 160, beautiful little camera. So a number of these cameras have something in common, but a couple of them don't. The other camera that I've got here, which I'll start off talking about, is um, my dad's old um, Yashica, Yashica Standard 8 movie camera. I'll put a link, I've done a review of this camera on my YouTube channel, so I'll put a link on, on this and uh, you can have a look at that, that link. Uh, in fact, I'll just come out now and I'll show you a couple of things about it because in our, um, make sure I don't trip over all this stuff again, <coughs> in our family archives, there's a famous some movie film that my dad took using this camera. There it is. This is the old wind-up type camera, clockwork. Hear it going? Turn, turns it on and off like that. So the thing is that um, if you wanted to put yourself in the movie, how did you do that with a camera like that? Well, there's a famous movie in our family archives. My dad and mum went camping years ago and had the old FJ or FX Holden and my dad built a special annex to go around it, red and white stripes, and they were camping out in the middle of nowhere and my dad decided to make a home movie of him chasing mum round and round the tent. And he filmed it in remote control. And then after he'd done about three or four laps of the tent, he then realised that the camera was still running. So he raced over to turn it off. One day I'll put that on YouTube so you can see it. It's a classic bit of stuff. But how did he do it? Well, he had this little remote control. There you go. Look at that. And it's clockwork. You just wind it up. And it's got a little plunger here. <coughs> and what you do is you um, put this in this, we'll wind this, well, I think we wound this up. Okay, so you put this into the little screw mount spot here, and I'll show you some more of this type of thing on some of the other film cameras. Is that gonna go in for me? Whoops, wait a minute. I've gotta take it back a bit, I think. I'm really not demonstrating that very well. I should have done some bit more research. But trust me, that actually goes into there. And um, unless it was a different camera that he used. But that goes in there. This is a clockwork little self-timer. And it gives you a few minutes or 20 seconds, I think it gives you. Uh, and that's how he did it. He took used this little remote control. And you can use these sort of remote controls on film cameras too. Putting in a little um, a thread into the, um, the plunger into your... Uh, cable release socket on your films. Anyway, so that's that. That really starting off well, aren't I? Going well. But that's the sort of thing that he used to do that um, remote control of the film. Now, some of these cameras, there's about one, two, three, four, five, have something in common. They have something in common. Five of these cameras have something in common. The other two are a bit different. Uh, but they're all Pentaxes, as you can see. Now, the thing that five of them have in common is that this little remote control here, which there is a box somewhere, I've probably lost that too. Here it is. <laughs> this is the uh, Pentax, Pentax Remote Control F. It comes in a little box like that, very small. I'll come up and show it to you. I should have had it over there and showed it to you before. This is all good rehabilitation, this getting up and down. So there you are. It's very small. I mean, it looks big here because I'm up close to the lens, but it's very small. Only about um, an inch and a half long and very thin. And it's just press stop and start. So basically, five of these cameras you can use with this remote control. You can use the uh, some of the digital cameras that I've got. Two of these digital SLRs it'll work on. 
You'll work, also work on the, the KX and the KR and lots of other Pentax digital SLRs. It also works on this little point and shoot film camera. And it also works on the Pentax MZS. Now the cat's going to join me. That's all I need. And it works on this MZ6. So it works on all five of those cameras. So to demonstrate that, and I'm, I'm sure the demonstration will go wrong, I'm going to trigger those cameras off. I'm going to pop the flash up, set all of these so that they are on remote operation, and then press the trigger and see if all the flashes go off at the same time. I have to go over there to uh, where the camera is to actually set this going. So that'll be an interesting experiment. <coughs> the other thing with um, the other two cameras, because over the years, technology has adapted to change with the times. We've got remotes for everything these days, remotes for video cameras, for, for our digital SLRs, and of course with the latest digital, um, um, the latest digital um, cameras, you can use your phone to set them off remotely and control them. And we can have remote control of drones and all that sort of stuff. So I'll just show you this one. This is the Pentax SFXN. I had a look on this to see if it had any remote control uh, cap capabilities for that little gadget. It doesn't, but these do have a remote control, which I've got one of, fortunately. It's in lock at the moment. So that just plugs into the side there. And um, you just press the button. We'll see if this is turned on. I think it is. See what happens. We'll just take a photo by pressing the remote control. There you go. So it worked. Now, so why do you need, apart from taking selfies, why, why do we need remote control? Well, <coughs> I'll, start, I'll put that question to you again. So apart from taking selfies um, and putting yourself in the picture, I've done it quite often over the years, putting myself in family group photos and things like that. Um, <coughs> so why do we... Um, need a remote control on cameras. Well, the thing is that sometimes, particularly if you're doing landscape photography, you might want to keep the camera on a tripod and have it very steady. And if you're pressing a button or something like that, you can cause shake and get some movement. But if you're using a remote control, particularly one of these, you're not touching the camera at all, you're not moving it. If the camera's firm and secure on the tripod, that'll be fine. Also, some of these, you can use to um, you could use it for vlogging. Not on these cameras, I don't think. I don't think this works for movies on the digital Pentax digital SLRs, the ones I've got anyway. I noticed that my Canon 600D and 700D, you can get a remote for them, which I'll probably get now that I realise you can get one, and that can also trigger your movies off as well. So you could use that for your vlogging. I could be, in fact, it might be a good idea if I uh, stop tipping my phone over on this little light, flimsy tripod over here. Um, I think uh, my tripod, that little tripod for the phone needs a hip replacement more than I do. So anyway, but um, yeah, you can um, uh, use these remote controls for all sorts of reasons. And of course, you know, the, the sky's the limit on how they control things now. The other way of controlling things is, um, and I had one here before, is that um, this is the old Pentax Spotmatic. And I'll come up and show you. <coughs> I had my cable release cord here before, but I've lost it since I started setting all this up. And um, so basically, just up here is the cable release. So if you, um, what's going on there? So I need to get rid of the number five. Okay, so I found out what the problem was. The um, this camera wasn't was jammed. The shutter wasn't releasing. So uh, and I realised by just using the tension on here that there was a film in it, and it was on on five exposures here, and. Um, so what I did is I pressed this shutter release button here, rewound the film till I till it just gave a little bit. So I knew I hadn't rewound the film back into the uh, into the box here. So here's the film, and this was wasn't 
taking up properly. It wasn't winding on properly, and it's all a bit curled there. So what I'm going to do, but it'd be, it had taken five shots. So what I'll do later on is I'll just cut that bit off there and reload it into the camera, and it should be going. So, so you can see now that the camera is fine, but it was jammed before for some reason, and it was jammed up up, up to five exposures. So all I do next time is I'll put that film back in there, and I'll just cut off a little bit at the start and see if I can get it again. I wind through five shots, take five shots with a lens cap on my hand over there so that it doesn't re-expose the shots that have already been taken and then I'll be able to do it again. So, but what I'm saying is that the form of self-timer with some of the earlier cameras, of course, was using these um, uh, little uh, cable release sockets and many of the old film cameras have that cable release socket. The more modern digital SLRs, of course, uh, don't have that. So that was the little Pentax Spotmatic. It's another close look up at the uh, little uh, film, uh, movie film self timer that we had before too. So, and whether I showed you what it looked like on the inside here. Is that open? I think it does. Ah, that flipped open before and gave me a bit more information. I have to get into that and <laughs> read the instructions properly. So anyway, so. We're getting there. So we're almost ready to have an experiment to see if we can set these up to make them work. So I guess you can do your own research about remote controls. And um, what I'm going to do now is put all of these cameras in the position whereby this should trigger it off. Now, I haven't tested it. <laughs> Famous last words. Why would he test it? So it should fire that one. It should fire that one. I'm going to put the flash up on each of these. It should fire that one. It should fire this one. And it should fire that one. So I'm just going to set them up now. And you should get a flashing light here somewhere when we set this up. Let's have a look now. Ah, with the, with the Pentax MZS, you can't do remote firing unless you have one of these battery grips on the bottom. And you can see here, there is, it says over here, uh, remote, there's a little symbol there. Can you see that there? And you just press this up, press it up. And then on the front here, you should be seeing that light flashing on and off. That means it's, re it's primed up and ready to go. So we'll put that one up, we'll just leave that. Hopefully the batteries will last while I'm setting all these up. That light's still flashing. This one here. A little button over here and adjust the self timer. That's now on self timer. That's going as well. We'll pop the flash up. Get this one out the road. This one here, we'll turn this one on. We'll set that one to self-timer now. That's got a flashing button as well. You should see, to see that flashing button there. And we'll pop the flash up. Sorry, forgot to do that. Pop the flash up. This one here. This little uh, point and shoot. We've got to turn that on first. Whoops. And the little self-timer button over here. Now that's got a flashing light too. This one over here. And that should the flash should go up on that one. And this one over here. We set this one up. And we go. Remote control. We've got the remote control on, I think. we have. <laughs> Let's have another go. We'll pop the flash up. So I haven't tested this to see if they'll all go off at once. This battery in here is almost flat in this one here. So that's no good. So now I'm going to come over here with the remote control. Stand back here. 
and we'll see what happens. I'll point at one down here. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, all flashing. Here we go. Oh, this one over here hasn't got the flash up. You better pop the flash up on this one, which goes up like that. So that should prove to us that these are going to fire. So here we go. One, two, three. I think they all went. Don't know about this ISTD one down here. There you go. I think five of them went off, but you have to trust me on that. So, coming back right around, I'm earning my cup of tea and a biscuit in a minute. So, so there you go. I hope you found that informative. Do some research of your own. You should turn all these off because this one here, I was amazed that that one kept going because that battery was showing pretty flat. Turn that off. That one down there, that one down there. And of course the other ones, you, um, you use the plungers. And of course, the other alternative to using a remote control is the self timer mode which you can put your camera on a tripod and you can get everyone and set the camera up everyone in front of the group press it on self timer you can take up to about 10 shots with a lot of these cameras um, which is a lot of fun to do as well but uh, you can you can take control this way of doing it and as I said with the modern digital SLRs um, a remote control is probably a good way to do vlogging as well uh, apart from the modern cameras so some of you are getting into film cameras maybe you should have a look at some of the film cameras you've got um, this remote control this little one here they cost about thirty dollars or more in australia although you can get a cheaper version online i think for about nine dollars i'm not sure that's australian or american or whatever but uh, these think work with a few of these point and shoot pentax cameras and some of these other uh, pentax cameras as well so if you're into pentax um, have a look around whatever camera you're using look up on the internet and see whether they have remote controls and start to have some fun. I just started doing this because I was looking into my camera bag, as you do, to see what odds and sods were there. And I thought, oh, I haven't used that for a long time. Let's have a look at it. So then I got the idea of doing this video. So once again, thanks for watching, bloopers and all. And uh, like if you like, subscribe if you wish. And I'll see you next time. Thanks again.